Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video on how to create 3D seams without using normal map. So this approach I use quite a lot in my daily work because I have to export all the 3D garments from, out from Clo and in a real-time 3D viewer where it's not possible to use those normal maps for the seams. So that's why I have to use a different approach um, to get those seams to be visible. If you only work in Clo, it's totally not necessary to do this step because I think the normal maps in Clo do a pretty decent job to emphasize the seam lines, especially when it's a straight line. I think it looks great and very realistic. When it's a bias cut or curve, sometimes the normal map can look a little bit pixelated, especially when you do close-ups. I think it the closer you go, the less realistic it looks, but I think in general it is a pretty good solution and you don't really have to put a lot of work to achieve it. Basically, you don't have to put any work. Another thing is that the light also affects the visibility of your seams, so it depends where the light is coming from. If it is coming directly at your garment, you will lose some of that seam visibility, especially here. The seams are not very visible and, and even in real life, you can't really see all the seams all the time, so that's totally natural. And also with my method, that depending on the light there still will be the case that you can see a certain seam if the light hits the garment in a certain way so that's just something to keep in mind so first i will switch off the show seam lines option this is basically what you usually will see if you export your garment out of clo and put it in some other software unless you export it with the baked normal map that will have this seam normal map included then this is basically the result that you will get so first i will start with the armhole here what you also need to think about is when you do these extra steps so i would suggest you to do it um, when you have the final particle distance added because the overall garment drape is different depending on the particle distance you use and also this um, 3d seam will look different depending on what kind of particle distance you're working on. So if your final particle distance that you want to use is five, so I, I recommend starting with that and also decrease additional thickness collision because that will also affect the look of the seam. Okay, so I will start with the sleeve. So the approach is very simple. First, you offset as internal line um, in this case, I will use one offset with two millimeter distance. I will start with that. You can also do one millimeter distance. This also depends on how visible you want the seam to be. So I will start with two. And also it is necessary to think about what kind of visual look do you want to achieve? Do you want it to look like both seam allowances are iron to one side or should it be symmetrical well that's up to you what what kind of result you want so this time i will try to achieve the look that both seam allowances are ironed um, towards the sleeve so how to achieve that first you have to add fold angle to the internal line that's on your sleeve so here i will do a sharp one 90. and then the next step is to adjust fold angle of the seam, uh, sewing itself and I want it to be quite sharp, folding inside quite sharp. So I will start with 270. There is no, in my opinion, there is no standard values here because it really depends on what kind of garment you have, whether it's loose fit or tight fit and also what kind of fabric you're using and what kind of particle distance you have and so on and so on. But um, these are values that you can start with and then you can fine tune it as you go. And this, I will not touch at all. Whether you need this line or not, that's up to you. I use it just so that it helps um, the bends here, um, but I think you probably can live without it as well. Well, anyway, let me simulate. And as you can see, the fold is created here. And sometimes you, you will be able to see this kind of edges, maybe this, this look maybe is enough for you. If it's not enough, you can add additional internal lines that are helping to split the mesh. Therefore, the look um, is becoming more smooth. And you can also add one millimeter internal line in between these two lines. 
that can also help the bend and create a smoother look. So at this point, it, it is really up to you how far you want to go and how realistic the look you want. Um, for me, I think this is already pretty good. Then let's do also this one. The oak, this is a very typical, I think, case because often when we have yolks, the seam allowance is ironed towards the yolk so there is a pretty visible bump here but often if you sew it just like this there is no bump so it doesn't really look like there's any yolk so i again add this internal line two millimeter and here i will put 90 and sewing line fold angle i will change to 270. And again, the sewing line creates fold inside and the internal line creates tiny fold towards outside. And here the same principle, if you want to go further, you can offset as internal line one millimeter or two millimeter. And here you can add one millimeter to the other side. Just so that the overall fold is smoother looks like that of course you have to watch out a little bit if you know the connections of the seams look natural if there are parts where it's not too much for example here because the garment is hanging on the shoulders of course this part can become more flat because all this weight is pulling um, this line and for example, here you can see it's very, very sharp. So you can watch out. Maybe sometimes you have to split the line somewhere here and then you have to use different fold angles for different parts of the line. That, that could be a case too. Um, so keep in mind to check how everything looks at the end. Um, here, let's do a seam where both seam allowances are ironed. So they're not ironed to one side, but to both sides. So here also very simple, offset as internal line, add one or two millimeter. I will add two. And here I'm not gonna do such a sharp internal fold. I will do 220. And for these, I will do 130. Okay, so this already looks pretty good. And as you can see here as well, you can see these little triangles. So that's why it's good to add another internal line or maybe even two just to smooth out that, that fold. And from here, it does look like it's too sharp. And this is also one thing to keep in mind because these internal lines are folding, they can also affect the overall, um, overall simulation of your garment. So for that, you need to kind of reduce a little bit the the fold line the fold angle so that it doesn't affect the actual uh drape of the whole garment yeah so this looks much more natural before it was too sharp and i will do the same for the sleeve so because i already see i need two uh internal lines i will just add two already and then only this one i will add 160 for the fold line and for the seam i will do 220. but it could be that 220 is not enough if you want even more even deeper look of course you can always increase just be careful for it not to look too fake and some other applications where I use this, um, for example, when we have button downs, sometimes I'm too lazy to add like a second layer for, for these. Um, oh, I have some extra, I will delete those. Um, for these lines here, so one here where the top stitch usually goes, I do the same approach. I do both sides. This one, not too sharp. 2020 I think is fine. This one I will do 160 as I see it's a, it's a good value for this garment. 
and creates very nice fold. Also, this line you can add some some fold. Not always it looks good though. But if you're like if you really need like a close-up image and you don't want to add those extra layers, then this I think is fine. Yeah, it creates that nice dimension. And the other one is also pockets. Um, there are good ways how uh, there are other ways how to make your pocket more visible, especially when you have prints. Pockets tend to get lost very easily. Um, so one thing, the easiest, of course, you can add additional thickness rendering, um, but also you can use this approach. So I offset as internal line. I use two lines as well in this case, and change only this one to one thirty. And you can see it, it creates like a, a very nice bump here as well. And it, it's much more visible now than the other one. And the same, same goes to the top part. Two internal lines, which I just done to 130. Maybe this doesn't really look that natural. But well, it, it does create a little bit dimension, so it does look um, like there is an actual fold, even though there isn't. And the last one, I will just add this one. Both sides again. So 220, 160. And in this case, what, what is interesting that this actually doesn't really look that great. So to avoid that, sometimes you need to add fold rendering as well, so that the the inner part, the inner line is kind of more sharp, so it looks, yeah, completely different, right? Like very different results. And the last thing, let's check how it looks in render. Yeah, so of course this part looks much more realistic than this one where we did nothing. So that's it for this video. Next week I will show you how to create truly true to life themes with seam allowances and how to handle the layers and all that. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, please make sure to leave those in the comment section. I will try to answer if you have any. Yeah, so thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.